Welcome and thank you for joining today's web conference, FERC 844, Uplift Cost Allocation Transparency. Time all audience member lines are in listen only mode until the QA call. At that time, I will provide instructions on how you may ask questions over the phone. By our technical assistance, please send a private note to the event producer via that I'll turn the call over to Rada Magical. Lead Client Trainer. Rada, please go ahead. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for everyone for joining us on today's call. We're here to talk about the new reports that are being implemented to comply with FERC Order 844, which increases transparency regarding uplift cost allocation. Before we get started, we'll do a quick round of introductions so you know who you're speaking with on this side of the phone. My name is Radha Madrigal, and I'm in the External Training and Readiness team. This is Abhishek Kondiwale from Market Analysis and uh, Validation Team. This is Eureka Colado from Business Solutions IT Department. Okay, and that's who we are on this side of the phone. In an effort to increase transparency and provide greater service to our stakeholders, we are recording this webinar. It will be posted on our website so that you can review it in the future and for those who were not able to join today's call. For those of you who are following along on the call, these slides are posted on kaiso.com and can be found in the Learning Center under New Modules and on the Release Planning page under the Independent 2019 Releases. Today we'll be discussing our compliance with FERC Order 844. We'll go over the implementation timeline and then we'll take a look at the new reports. We have about a dozen slides to go through, so we will show those to you and then we'll do a question and answer session toward the end of the call. In order to comply with FERC Order 844, which mandated the creation of three new monthly reports that provide additional information on uplift costs, uh, the zonal uplift, the resource-specific uplift, and the operator-initiated commitment reports have been created, and we are implementing these new reports on the OASIS site. This timeline here will show you our plans for implementation. I do want to point out uh, for you to tune into the RUG meetings for any updates to the dates that are shown below. External testing is going to occur in the MAP stage environment, so you'll see these three new reports accessible from the energy menu in OASIS. That will begin February 18th through February 22nd. And you'll see that the very first report that we will publish uh, in production is the Zonal Uplift Report, which will be done on or before February 20th. Later, you'll see the Operator Initiated Commitment Report. That will be posted on or before March 4th. And then the Resource Specific Uplift Report will be published on or before May 2nd. All of these reports are going to be added to the Energy tab on OASIS. The Zonal Uplift Report is a monthly report with data granularity at the daily level. The Zonal Uplift Report contains monthly uplift payments to resources. The report identifies uplift payments by transmission zone, day, and uplift category or charge code. For purposes of this report, a transmission zone within KISO shall reflect the transmission access charge area of each participating transmission owner. This report is published at the end of each trade month plus 20 calendar days. And since we make corrections in the T plus 55B settlement cycle, we wanted to incorporate any corrections or updates in these reports as well. So if there are any corrections, we will republish the Zonal Uplift Report at 80 days after the end of the month. This is a mock-up of what the report will look like. As I mentioned on the previous slide, this report shows the monthly uplift paid by transmission zone, day, and uplift category. Each of these categories has its own charge code. Each charge code has a configuration guide that explains how that code is calculated. These configuration guides are accessible from the Settlements and Billing BPM page. 
For example, the first charge code listed on this sam uh, the sample mock-up is charge code 6630, which is the IFM bid cost recovery settlement. And the next one you see listed there is charge code 6620, which is the RUC and RTM bid cost recovery settlement. You can look at each of these individual charge codes in the configuration guide for more information on each code. Turning now to the resource-specific uplift report, it is also a monthly, monthly report and its granularity will be monthly as well. This report contains the uplift paid to each resource by uplift category and aggregated across a trade month. This report is published at the end of each month plus 90 calendar days. Here is a mock-up of the resource-specific uplift report. You can see that the uplift amount for each resource is aggregated across the month and broken out by charge code. And finally, we have the operator-initiated commitment report, which is also a monthly report, and its granularity will be per exceptional dispatch and per close of the day ahead market for RUC. The operator-initiated commitment report contains monthly information reflecting operator commitment that includes the following information. It will include the commitment size in megawatts, the transmission zone, and the commitment reason, which will be a specific code. You can find the reason codes in the Market Operations BPM Appendices, Section K1. It will also provide the commitment start time of each operator-initiated commitment. This report is published at the end of each trade month plus 30 calendar days. Here's an example of the report. As you can see, it will contain a list of each operator-initiated commitment. The specific resources will not be identified, but you'll see the start and end time, the TAC area, which market it was for, the size and megawatts of the commitment, the reason why, et cetera. I want to note that this image is just a mock-up, so the reason codes you see won't just be letters and numbers that need to be decoded. They will be actual words on the report. This slide here shows you a subset of examples of those reasons for exceptional dispatches. We also wanted to point out that for RUC commitments, the reason will be listed as system-wide capacity and the clarified reason would be optimization, since the commitment for RUC is coming from the market optimization. As I mentioned on a previous slide, we have added a table to the appendices for the market operations BPM that contains all of these reason codes. You can see the complete list by going to the BPM change management application. There is a proposed revision request number 1128 that was submitted on January 25th, and it includes the table with all of the reason codes. That is what we wanted to share with you about the three new reports. Now we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. So Lauren, if you will do a check with the audience to see if anybody has any questions. Please feel free to place yourself into the question queue by dialing pound two on your telephone keypad. You'll hear a notification when your line is unmuted. At that time, please state your name and question. Again, that is pound two to enter the question queue. We do have a caller. Please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, this is Elvis from Boto over at PG&E. I just had a, a question on the um, uh, the commitment, the operator commitment report. I noticed the resource bid sequence. Is that going to be the same resource bid sequence that would be uh, it would it would correlate to the resource bid sequence used in the public bid data? No, it, it won't be. It won't be the same. It'll be a different. So there'll be a different set of resource yeah. bid sequences in that file, but they will be consistent exactly. over time. 
Uh, no, it won't be consistent over time as well because it's just a random uh, methodology that we use just to put a random uh, to match the resources. That's it. Okay. So how will the um, how will the will this be on a basically on a daily basis? There would be different resource bid sequences used, or what? What's the what's the time frame in which those? Um, I mean, they're going to be consistent over one day at least. Is that right? Uh, over I mean, the month. Over a given month. Yeah. Great. Okay. Very good. And then the uh, other one, the the one with the uh, actual monthly charges, that's going to be an un, uh, unanonymized data by by resource. Is that right? Yes. That's yes. going to be the actual. I, yes. Actual resource names. Actual resource names. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. And at this Anybody? time, we do not have any other callers. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make a clarification. Those, the three new reports will not have a screen display, but um, rather a download from the UI, um, from the OASIS UI application. So in addition to that, we will still have the APIs um, available as well. So what you're saying is we look at this report mock-up when they run it, they're not going to see the report display to the screen. They'll have just that top bar where it says download XML or CSV? Correct. Okay. Yes. Thanks for that clarification, Thank Eureka. You. So again, when you're running these reports, I'm showing you a sample mock-up on the screen, but you won't see the, the data display to the screen in Oasis. You'll have to click on one of those download buttons in order to obtain the report. So the end of the slide deck contains reference material. You'll see a link to the BRS along with links to the FERC documents. As I mentioned at the beginning of the call, these slides are posted on kaisa.com and can be found in the Learning Center under New Modules and on the Release Planning page under the Independent 2019 Releases. Before we go, Lauren, was there anybody who may have shown up in queue? Once again, dial pound two if you have a question. We do not have anyone new coming into the queue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your participation in the right call. On. Yes. I'm so sorry. We've just had a participant. Do we have okay. time for a question? Yes, we do. All right. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, this is Nona Kachitro from PGE. Uh, the previous uh, screen you were showing report, and you said it will not. There will be no GUI, right? Uh, it will be That's available correct. download, CSV download. So my question is, XML will be available as well? Yes. If you take a look at the picture now, I've moved it back to that screen, you'll see that it has two sections, one, for, one button for download XML and one link there for download CSV. So either of those two formats you'll be able to download it's the report in. Okay. Great. Thank you. And we actually had another caller enter the queue as well. Okay. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, this is Elvis Kubota again. So um, just to verify, what's the – will there be data available uh, – uh, uh, what's the as-of date when this report becomes uh, production? Is it 4-1? Uh, It'll be for January. So the okay. very first production – yeah, so it's going to be January data that we'll be providing in February, and then March and May. Yeah. Okay, this is actually – Every report has a different timeline to it. So the zonal okay. uplift is the first report that will be there in production, and you'll be able to see that on 220, I think, so uh, for January data. Great. Great. So, and you'll so as soon as it's so as soon as you've rolled it out in production, you'll start seeing the data for the for the the dates to the 30 days or 90 days in the past, in the past, depending on the uh, on the, the the way it's defined. Yes, um, correct. Actually, we will we will start beginning the January 2019 trade month going forward. Uh huh. 
Okay, so whether you whether it's so only when that is 90 days past will you be showing the 90. So will the will the reports be up on the site prior to 90 days after January 1st? The ones that are coming in later, or are they being rolled out on? No, you won't be able to see that before before the 90 days. So whenever, so basically. Uh, so the first zonal report you'll be able to see that in Feb, and right. then subsequently you'll right. be able to see the resource-specific report that is after that has a timeline of 80 days, I think so. Uh, yeah. So operator initiated will be on or before March 4th, okay. and that will be January. That will be again January date, yes. And then resource-specific on or before May 2nd. And that'll be the first time we'll be pulling January data. Yes. Okay, so the second report was still on a 90-day time frame, though, right, March 4th? Correct. So that really wouldn't, you really won't see anything until um, April, essentially, or a little bit before April, because if you're starting on January 1st, you won't be 90 days after January 1st until late, late March. Is that correct? I don't know. Those are the publication dates that we have. Uh, but there may not be any data, actually, from what the other person was saying. There may not be actually any data there on March 4th. It may be. So before, you won't be able to see that data. But on March 4th, you'll be able to see the data for January. That's what my point was. OK, but I thought that was on a 90. It's not on a 90-day timeline? No, the, the three reports have different timelines. OK, and what's the, what's the timeline on the second one again? That's 25 days. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, that's what. Okay, and then one one last sort of follow up. On, so on the first two reports, uh, you mentioned January 1st. Does that mean you can pull data going back to January 1st on that day? So anything from January 1st on will be uh, will be available in the system on that day. Yes, that's true. Great. Okay, so we can start. Pull, okay, we can. We can pull in historical data for multiple days on, on the days when these reports become available. Yes. It's actually a, it, it's a full trade month report download. Um, it's not, we, the user will not be able to extract by trading okay. day, but. I see, okay, for the first report. So on, on February 20th or whatever we'll build. All February 20th. Are monthly. Okay, so on February 20th, we'll be able to pull a full report for January for the first report. Yes. On March 4th, we'll be able to pull the full report for January on the second report. And on May, whatever, we'll be able to pull the full, full month's report for the third report. Yes. yes. Great. Okay, thank you very much for that clarification. Appreciate it. And at this time, we do not have any other callers. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for your participation in today's call. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to speaking with you again. That concludes our conference. Thank you for using AT&T Event Conferencing Enhanced.